Hi everybody, thanks for coming back. So today we're going to install a pre-hung door and door frame into a rough opening. I know it's something that a lot of people build up in their mind and think it's a lot harder than it is, but honestly, it's not that difficult. It's just a few little simple steps, a couple things to keep in mind, and you'll have a door in a hole. <laughs> so I'm also going to touch real quick on trimming and finishing it out, and when you're done, you're going to have something that looks as awesome as this. So without further ado, let's get into it. So to get started, I always like to double check my floor, make sure it's good and level. In my case, I'm pretty well bang on, so I'm just going to roll with it. And double check your walls as well, just so you know approximately how many shims you're going to need and where you're going to need the most of. Okay, one quick thing to note is if your floor is at a level just a little bit, I'm talking about an eighth of an inch or so, you're going to want to take the high side. My floor is perfectly level in this case, so I'm good. But let's say this side was a little bit higher, this side was low. You would actually take the high side and then take a square with a circular saw. And then on the bottom side of the door jam itself, you're actually going to take your square, put it on the side. And you would take the circular saw and zip off the eighth of an inch on the high side. And that'll level the door back out for you in the frame. I just want to jump in real quick and clarify a couple things. Now, this method is really good if your flooring is already down and it's pretty, pretty level to begin with. If your floor is way more out of whack, uneven and unlevel, unfortunately you're going to have to go look elsewhere for the information. This is not that video, this is a simple door install. Alternately, if you don't have flooring down yet, if you're replacing the flooring, you're installing all your door frames first, uh, go ahead and set your door frame on a couple pieces of scrap flooring that you're going to be laying down or just on some shims. If you install it on some shims, and let's say you're maybe again an eighth of an inch out, it's a little bit too low for you to slide your flooring underneath once it's finished, go ahead and just take your flooring, mark off the height of it, and just undercut the door jam and then slide your flooring in afterwards. It's not a big deal. All right, so once you've got the whole door assembly manhandled and wrestled into place, go ahead and tap it into place and get it about as flush as you can with the drywall. From there, what we're going to do is open the door up 90 degrees to the opening and then shim the outside edge of the door up to keep the door frame flush with the drywall on top. Now I know this is probably really simple and almost everybody out there has seen a shim before, but if you haven't, they are tapered. There's a big end and a small end. We want to install them opposite to each other like that. Do not install them both with the big end on one side and the small end on the other because that will twist the door frame in the hole. Now to start installing our shims, we're going to install them just above the top hinge. Go ahead and just slide them in there and adjust as necessary until all the slack is gone but no excess pressure. If you need to hold the door frame kind of into place, you can go ahead and install a couple on the opposite side just for a little bit of resistance again. One thing to note with your shims as well, is when you're pushing your shims in, they should be keeping square to themselves. But if your door jam, like the framing itself, the two by four, is actually twisted, you wanna make sure that your shims don't have any of that back and forth play in them. So in this case, I'm gonna to wanna to push the thick side further through to take up the gap on this side, so that way I don't twist the door frame inside of the uh, framing hole. Now with the shims installed correctly, the slack taken out, I'm going to go ahead and use a straight edge. This will line up the door frame to the drywall and then I can attach the door frame to the wall through the shims. Make sure you go through the shims, that way the door frame won't deform on you. Whoa! Now I know a lot of people out there are going to be yelling at me saying holy crap he just installed a door frame with an 18 gauge brad nailer and some 2 inch nails. That's not going to be strong enough. Trust me it is, get off my back, don't yell at me, it's fine. Alternately though, if you don't have a brad nailer, you can go ahead and use a drill with a countersink drill bit, and then instead of going through the door frame itself, you're gonna drill through the door stop. So you're gonna take right through the door stop and you're going to use your drill and drill bit, go through the door stop, countersink the head just enough so that the screw will be buried, and from there, taking an impact, you can also use the drill if you don't have an impact, but an impact is just a little bit easier. And at least a two and a half inch long deck screw, and you're going to drill through the door stop into your hole there and through your shims and just, just get it tight enough that it sucks up and that's about it. 
Don't keep on torquing this thing down so you try and blow the door jam through the 2x4. You don't want that. It just has to be snug. That's it. Good? Let's continue. Alrighty, top is set into place. Now we can go ahead and continue sliding our shims into the door frame, working our way down. So again, sliding them just in above the center and the bottom hinges. And once everything is good and the slack is taken up but don't exert pressure, Go ahead and check and make sure the door frame is perfectly level and make any adjustments to your shims as needed. Also make sure it's still plumb with itself. If it has moved in the door frame, go ahead and kick the bottom in or out as needed. Once everything is all good, again, through the shims, go ahead and add your nails or your screws, whatever you're using, through the door frame into the uh, wood behind it. So with our hinge side done and the door closed, now we can check our reveal between the door and the door frame itself. And if everything went smoothly, you should have a nice, perfect, even reveal just like that. Now to reference the, our reveal on the other side, we're actually not going to use the level. We're going to use the door itself. So about the height as the other side, go ahead and add a couple of shims. Again, just uh, taking up the slack, but not exerting pressure. Close the door and double check your reveal and adjust as necessary. If you're building the door on some shims and not the actual flooring, adjust the height as well as necessary. Now for the bottom side, we're actually going to close the door and put ever slight pressure against the door frame itself with the door. That's going to self align the door frame to the door so when we close it later on we have a nice perfect tight fit. Now again, about the same height as the other side, go ahead and add your shims. Now, as you can see where my shims are, I've actually got a big gap, but the bottom is actually kicked out and it's rubbing the door. Now, I have a real wood door frame. If you have an MDF door frame, you might not run into this problem, but mine is a little bit of a twist. So again, it's an easy fix. I'm going to pull the bottom out and fire a nail through there and that'll hold it away. In the middle, right above my striker plate, I've actually got the opposite problem. I've got to open my reveal up. So I have to hold on to my shims on this one and I just pull the door frame out away and check my reveal against the door. Once I have the depth kind of set where I want it, go ahead and fire a nail through that and double check it. Once it looks good, then I continued on and fired in the rest of my nails. To finish up, use a sharp knife, score and snap off all your shims. You can use a hammer if you want. And then fill in all the nail holes. Just use some drywall spackle and overfill the holes. So that way when it dries and they shrink a little bit, you sand them off. They're going to be flush and not create a divot. Now this is where it starts to finally look like something. We got to trim it out. So I'm leaving a quarter inch reveal between the trim and the door frame all the way around. I'm attaching it to the door frame using one inch brad nails and then I'm going to come back and attach the center of the trim to the stud behind it using some two inch brad nails. With the spackle drying on the nail holes, go ahead and remove the door and all the hinges from the door frame and set the door aside and give it a coat of trim paint. Time to make this guy pretty. Now there's a small gap between the door frame and the trim as well as in the top corners of the door frame between the top and the side. So we're going to fill that in with a trim and baseboard specific caulk. I'll have a link to some down below, but you want to use this stuff because it's less likely to crack over time. It's more flexible. Apply a very thin bead to all of the gaps and I like to do a final pass with my pinky just to make sure I can keep that nice crisp line between the door frame and the trim. While the caulking's drying, go ahead and sand all of your nail holes with a fine grit sanding sponge. After the caulking's dry, now we can paint it. So I like to paint my caulking lines as well as the corners of the door frame with a small paintbrush. Don't get a whole lot in there, just enough to cover the frame. And then I like to do a final wipe with a small roller. Again, not applying a whole lot of pressure or a whole lot of paint. We don't want to cause any runs and we don't want to build up a whole lot of texture. If your flooring is already down, go ahead and slide a piece of paper under it so that way you don't have to worry about touching it when you come down to the very bottom. 
After all the painting's done, have somebody give you a hand and reinstall the door and all the hinges. Now, if you don't trust yourself with an impact or with a drill, you may want to just use a hand screwdriver here and apply these. You do not want them very tight. Just snug is all you need. It's a very light door. Then, attach your handle and admire your work. wasn't that hard at all so I really hope you guys enjoyed the video I honestly I really do truly hope you learned something from this pick at least something up if all you needed was a little hint on something you might have been stuck on I hope you may have found it so please you guys give this video a thumbs up I would really appreciate it hit me up down below let me know if you guys installed anything like this and if you picked some tips up I'd love to hear it otherwise I will see you guys next time